Hello St Martins. It's Wednesday March the 3rd and time for our Wednesday worship and Father Trevor is here to lead us on our way. Thanks Mrs Joshi. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So thank you. Let's have the candle alight for our worship. Now, in church last Sunday, we heard this gospel event when it happened before Jesus went to Jerusalem for the last time to allow Easter to happen. And I read it. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There, in their presence, he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it's wonderful for us to be here, so let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came, covering them in a shadow. And there was a voice from the cloud, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. And then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them anymore but Jesus. As they came down the mountain, Jesus warned them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. <coughs> Excuse me. Trust me, it is a long climb up that mountain. I've only ever done it in coach and taxi, and it takes at least 30 minutes. Each time I thought of how exhausted the disciples must have been by the time they reached the top. My, how they must have wanted a rest, and probably to unpack what had happened. But the other writers tell us they weren't given that chance because having gone back down the mountain, they were sworn to secrecy. We believe it was St Peter who dictated his memories to Mark. he began telling others that Jesus was God's son and that he had risen from the dead. All that Peter had discovered in his time with Jesus made him so positive, he didn't bother telling Mark about the strain of the event. That's the lesson to us all. It's good to be positive. By asking Jesus how we can remain positive, even when, let's say it, it's an uphill struggle to do so. Mrs Joshi. I have a prayer. Lord, we ask you to drive away any fears we have from our hearts and fill us with your love as we carry on our life journeys. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Mrs Joshi. I'd like to leave you with a question to send you on your way. And the question is, <coughs> has there been a time when you have not been so positive? And how did you feel when that happened? Our worship has ended. Let us proceed in peace. Amen. Amen.